Welcome back to College Football 25 and building the Chippewas. Eight and four on the 2030 season. Not where we wanted to be. Started out our season with two losses to Big Ten teams, then beat what was at the time the number one team in the country, Penn State. They wound up finishing the season eight and four as well, but they had much tougher schedules, so of course they're still ranked top 25. And then we just went on a roll, but we lost two of our final three games to Western Michigan, who also finishes the season ranked, and then Eastern Michigan, who wound up with the same record as us, and we actually beat them in the conference. Fourth in the MAC, not where we wanted to be, but just can't finish like that and, uh, and achieve our goals. So we get a little bit of a cookie when it comes to our bowl game in South Alabama. They finished the season 6-6, six and six, and they're considerably worse than we are. So... We're going to go out here and play our bowl game in what is going to be the final send-off for the butts-to-butt combo of quarterback Sean Butts and wide receiver Antonio, or Antoine Butt. you with us from Conway, South Carolina. This ought to be a fun matchup in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. There's nothing quite like wrapping up a regular season with a bowl victory. It just leaves a good taste in your mouth going into the offseason. As we'll see a squad from the Sun Belt, the South Alabama Jaguars, taking on a team from the MAC, the Central Michigan Chippewas. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Time to get this game started. Central Michigan gets the ball to start the Myrtle Beach Bowl. He returned from about the eight yard line in Westbrook. Oh, with a move. Nearly made something happen, but Central Michigan starts at the 22. Wow, that third down conversion percentage per game is uh, rough. All right, Sean Butts taking the field for the final time. Got running back Kyrie Straight in the game and some good blocks on the first play of the game. Straight near a first down, a gain of 10. We'll hand it. Off to him again, actually with a play that we don't get the call very often. It doesn't really pop up. And the direct snap to the running back. And Straight's got it, and Kyrie Straight with a bunch of space up to midfield already. That is one hell of a play. I feel like I've called it twice already in this game. In College Football 25 in general, and it just works to perfection every time. Sean Butts back to throw. Got a man trying to lead him up a little bit. Underthrown, intended for Andrade and intercepted. Uh-oh. Interception for Sean Butts. Gives the ball to South Alabama. Will the Paul Spitz era start before this game is over or after? Tyler DeBeer. <laughs> well, you know what? Cheers to DeBeer. Central Michigan defense takes the field for the first time. South Alabama from their own 33. Beard falls down. Broken tackle there. Nice run of six yards on the first play of the game for the Jaguars. Chance of fire up chips early in this one. Second and four. And a quick throw. Nobody near. The receiver, and look at this. South Alabama has crossed midfield. That's one of our better plays. Low yards against on average, and yet that was just really bad zone defense there on that. Second down and four after a run of six. Running back in motion, and it's a screen. That goes nowhere. In fact, it goes backwards a yard. No blockers out for the running back screen. Tackled by Bobby Hoosman. Third down and five, and a chance for the CMU defense to get off the field, but no damage done. Handoff, big tackle. Fourth down and five. Upcoming for South Alabama from... Hour 43, so they'll be looking to pin us deep here. 
And good to see that still happening. I kind of forgot about that from the last game. Every time there's a punt, there's going to be a roughing the punter penalty. The officials offer the deal and the coach accepts it. They will take the penalty. The backup safety on the right side has done that way, way, way too much. I mean, that's probably like seven or eight straight punts of games that we've actually played as there's a run for a first down. Colt York. Junior out of Alabama. That one thrown behind his man, second down and ten. Well, going to be important to probably go for it on fourth down a lot in this game, to be honest. Spinning out of tackles, holy shit. That was a nice run yet again for South Alabama. It's third and four. CMU defense has just been bashed around here. Lock got free. Throw on the run is knocked away by Pullard. So fourth and four. Let's. I don't remember it happening on field goal attempts. So hopefully, this is all the damage. It is. Field goal is good for South Alabama. It's three nothing. Almost had a guy get in there and hit the kicker, but mercifully that did not happen. It's okay, CMU fans. We'll be all right. So, after the so returning a kickoff for the second time already in this game. Make sure that Sean Butts is safe with the football this time around. Westbrook spinning out of a tackle near the 25 to the 24-yard line. Sean Butts, Kyrie Strait back out here. Here is Strait to the outside. Oh, we got a defender blocked pretty much right into our path. Otherwise, we really probably break that run. Good gain there by Kyrie. Got the tight end Andrade split out wide. Sean Butts hit as he throws, and it's third and one. Better than South Alabama in every way, so we cannot let this happen. Straight, going to pick up the first in bizarre fashion. First down ships. Going to send Antoine Butt here on this play. Thrown over the middle. Oh, dropped by Bouchard. Really? Felt like he had that for a second, but here's second and ten. Play action for Sean, but... And intercepted again! South Alabama with the ball at the 26. And I'd hate to do this, but we might have to start thinking about bringing Paul Spitz into the game. Every game we've ever played with Butts has kind of always started out like this. It's never that great. Man, I thought we... It's just been inaccurate balls on both of the interceptions. Killing us. And on the run. Cut down, but a first down. For the Jags. And execute a little better on this drive. You're absolutely right, David. Generally, the best red zone offense is... First down from the 16. So, let's see if they can be a little bit more physical. And another run. This one. Oh, man. That almost broke, but tripped up. Second down and six upcoming from the 12-yard line. Tight end motions into the backfield. And a handoff again. Cut down after a gain of two. Junior kickers should be able to make a field goal from here, no problem. Obviously, they don't want to have to settle for that. Locke makes a move, gets around, hit as he throws. Was the South Alabama quarterback incomplete? He got it away. Chip shot field goal. 
It is good. 6 nothing after two Sean Butts interceptions. Hawkins pounds it through the uprights. Well, pain early on. If it gets much worse for Sean Butts, it's going to have to be his CMU career done because we really can't lose this game, really. That'd be ending the season with losing three of our final four. Kyrie straight. Oh, that ain't going to go very well. Gain of only a yard. Might as well figure out if Butts is just going to be too rocked early so we can make the move now there we go wide open tight end is Andrade oh and Andrade got some blocks I actually thought I was gonna have to make a move around them first down CMU right around midfield I'll flip this send straight to the big part of the field here Kyrie straight on the run, looking for blocks, and absolutely slammed down. He got caught as he jumped in the air. My goodness. Andrade is wide open, looking for him, and he hangs on. Still not a great ball there for Sean Butts, but worked out well enough. First and 10 from the 21. Oh, we got pressure, and Butts is going to get thrown down for a loss of nine, man. Everything that could go wrong here early is going wrong. Antoine Button might be open on this play. He is Butts to Butt. You never know when the final time is going to be, but touchdown for Antoine Butt. I think we ran the same play two straight times, but Antoine Butt gets free this time, and really the first good throw of the day for Sean Butts. So the PAT, after a pretty miserable first quarter for a CMU lead. Up and good. I don't even know who our kicker is anymore. Uh, punter Rossi is handling kickoffs these days. And it'll be Two a and knee and a touchback to the 25. 25 yard line. Guys, we'll have another look at this South Alabama offense. He had to settle for the chip shot field goal last time, Jesse. They love for this one. South Alabama yet to find the end zone. We got a screen. No gain. Nice tackle from Bobby Hoosman. His third already. Good read on that. Beard got pretty banged up on that last play. We're going to go over user Duke. That one is thrown, dropped. That was right at the sticks. So now third and ten. The user, three different members of the defensive line here. Cleveland looking to get through. It's on a drag. Hoosman can't get there. First down for South Alabama. Two really nice defensive plays to put them in a third and ten situation. Just to give up a first down anyway. And scrambling away. This is going to be a sack and a loss of eight. First CMU sack of the day. Spencer Locke, the outside linebacker, got in. Second and 18, clear throwing situation. Cleland got free, and it's going to be a second straight sack for CMU. Make it third and 28. Alex Cleland playing defensive end for whatever reason, but he's going to make plays like that. No, no worries. They call 
a screen here on third and 28. Get a good chunk, but punting away. So I guess the, the thing is, is that we're going to have to user this guy and just make sure that he doesn't do anything. Donahue on the return, and he might have some space. Caught. Apparently our punt returner not fast. That ends the first quarter. 7-6, CMU, Kyrie Strait gets the handoff on the first play of the second quarter, and Strait, seven carries, 62 yards for the senior who tried to transfer after last season. Lob that up, that's going to be caught, Antoine Butt, hauled down inside the 40. Sean Butt might have things going again. Good to see. Butts, they're sending pressure. Got picked up, but not all of it. They sent just about everybody on that play. Second and 10 from the 37. Luckily, Butts got it away. Kyrie Strain on the run. Gets to the outside. Makes one man miss. Still going. Got absolutely popped near the 20. 15 more yards for Kyrie Strait. And play action. Butt's going to have to escape over here. Gonna dump that off to the tight end Grimes for a gain of six. It's an odd play to bring up the first down stats when you didn't pick up a first down. Second and four from the 16. We got plenty of blocks. Kyrie Strait to the six. Go with the touch pass. Nothing can go wrong here, at least in terms of turning the ball over. Watch us fumble after I say that. Out to the edge. A move from Callaway, and it's a touchdown for Central Michigan. Extra point away from an eight-point lead. Touch pass didn't work all that well, but Trevor Callaway, the junior, who might be the number one option heading into 2031 to the end zone. PAT up, PAT good. Seven plays, 70 yards in just over three minutes. So Rossi to punt, or kick off rather. And this one will get returned. Fairly decent return to the 24 yard line. See if the CMU defense can keep things going the way they've been going. And, yep, there's a tackle for loss. I think that was Cleland off the edge. Yep, Alex Cleland yet again. Fourteen-six. Duke trying to get free. That one thrown down the middle and caught. Safety was stepping up, but didn't step up early enough. First down, South Alabama. I don't know why we got a blitzer all the way over here. Oh, Christ, he's just going to go back. And now, oh, boy. This play is an absolute mess. And this is about as bad as it could have gone. To the outside, first down inside the 35. They had the perfect play call on. For a poor defensive play call and very poor execution. Oh my goodness, he caught that. That's a loss of a yard. Our guys have done a good job on the very few screens that they've uh, tried to do outside of the last one that got them down here to the 33. Second and 11. And a quick throw on the slant. Gain of nine. South Alabama likely in field goal range already. Here we go. Third and two, open man. Watch out to the corner. He spun out of a tackle and a touchdown for the Jags. That's tough. Cowards in the end zone for South Alabama, and I would imagine they go for two to tie this game here.
That was bad there, and then wrapped up, but just shrugged off. Well, for the moment, they're going to go for the one. I don't know why you'd run a fake here. They will worry about the tying score later. Huh. Hawkins kicks it away. Westbrook from the seven. Our blocking on kickoffs is just abysmal. Well, the CMU offense has been rolling last couple drives after some early struggles for Sean Butts. Kyrie straight. Another first down run, and that puts him over 100 yards on just 10 carries. What a game right now for Kyrie Strait. Bouchard motions out. I'm going to dump this off to Strait and see what he can't make happen. Gain of only three. Second down and seven. Looking toward the sideline, that is caught by Andrade, Manny Andrade. His third catch of the game, four-star freshman from a year ago. And Kyrie Strait just got called for a false start. Oof. So first and 15 now from the 40. See if Straight can't get that back for us. With a cut to the middle, he'll get it back and more. Gain of 12. Second down and three. I can see Andrade maybe burning everybody here. He did, looking to the end zone, knocked away. The safety with some closing speed. Swatted that away, we're just kinda lucky it's not intercepted. Don't want a long field goal attempt here, so we need straight to pick up this first down, and he does. Fake toss vertical. Oh, boy. Well, what could go wrong here? Looking outside. That may be. Oh, it should have been a touchdown. I don't know what happened there. He got glued to the sideline. That was bizarre. Good throw from Sean Butts, but couldn't bring it down inbounds. On the drag over the middle, that's straight looking. He's inside the 10 to the nine. First and goal now. If we score a touchdown here, I guess we could force the issue. Probably not the smartest thing in the world, but Manny Andrade, touchdown, Central Michigan. Chippewa's already up seven, 20 to 13. We could make it a two possession game by going for it, but I don't think we're gonna. PAT is good and we lead by eight. Right, I mean, I feel like we're still in a really good spot when it comes to that. We're gonna, at some point, South Alabama probably gonna have to go for two if we continue to score like we are right now. Returned again. That's a good block, but only to the 20. Under five to play here first half. Receiver motions to the backfield, actually. Beard, that's out wide. Oh, we got to make that tackle. Come on. Instead, it's a gain of six for Coward coming off the touchdown on the previous drive. Second and four. Oh, good Lord. We got burned out there. Cantrell with a tackle at the 40. I think Darkwa, the quarterback for South Alabama, currently winning the battle. With the senior, Sean Butts, as it's another kind of RPO-type play. Good for a gain of eight. Matthew Kidder on the reception. 
slants. He can run the option routes and find CMU needs a game changer here on defense. Another RPO. Might even be the same play. No idea what happened there, but it's a first down for the Jags. Dark with 13 of 17. And into Central Michigan territory. Cleveland. Oh, Cleveland got around. I didn't even realize it was a run. Gain of nine on the fifth tackle also was Fernando Santiago. Nice game for him early on. Second and one. And that's the two-minute warning. Well, let's see how aggressive South Alabama gets here. See if they want to just throw the ball or they want to kill a little bit of time here. Both teams with all of their timeouts. And a dump off. First down and more inside the 25. And even still trying to go when he's got four CMU defenders all around him. When you run those drag routes, it just takes a little bit of know-how. And when I say that, the receiver's got to 25 yards away from the end zone. Darkwa looking all over the place before he throws it away. The second and 10 upcoming. I might just call that same play again. I'm just not sure he knows what to do when we call cover four. Probably going to get burned on something short, and that's exactly what happened. It's going to make it third and one. Got a guy on a spy prior to the safeties on the running back. And for whatever reason, he just never broke on it, but it's going to be fourth down. The ball was dropped. So South Alabama lining up to kick the field goal and make it a one-score game. Kick is up and kick is good. So now CMU with all three of their timeouts with a chance to answer. Hawkins made all of his four kicks in this game, and now he kicks off. We'll take the touchback. Or the fair catch, I guess. Now let's see what Sean Butts can do with 57 seconds and all of his timeouts. Oh, boy. Not, not good. Third interception for Sean Butts, and it was a throw on the run that just sailed over the head of the running back. And the running back never, I think it was straight in the game, never really took notice of the fact that anything was wrong with that ball. And it's the second interception for Tyler DeBeer. Brutal. So now all of a sudden, South Alabama with a chance to lead here. Timeout Jags. We keep him out of the end zone. We can maintain a lead into the locker room. Oh, look at Beard getting into the backfield. This is a screen. Oh, my goodness, he caught it. Timeout South Alabama, but it's first and goal now. Just kept backing up, waiting for somebody to come up and finally found one. From the nine and 40 seconds to go. End zone, intercepted by Chavis. Pretty poor decision to return it, but out to the 15. To hopefully maintain a first half advantage. Heading into the locker room. Ray Chavis with the pick. So now CMU with the ball again, 34 seconds, and still three timeouts. That one's going to be wide open. Bad ball. Callaway. I can't tell if he got out of bounds or not. It appears he did. Oh, no, he didn't. Uh-oh. Well, we're wasting time right now. Kyrie straights out wide. They got a man all over us, and Butts just lucky to get it away. Big hit there on Sean Butts. 19 seconds. Oh, man, open. 
Oh my goodness, is he open? It is Antoine Butt down to the 13. Butts to butt yet again in timeout CMU. Quick timeout call by the offense after the play. 227 passing yards for Sean Butts as opposed to Dark was 177. Two timeouts, 13 seconds. Oh, it's going to... Wait! Incomplete, thank God. I thought for a second that actually got caught, even though it had no business. Little underthrown, yes. Indeed. Uh, Straight is just hung up there. He's going to get it eventually. Timeout with one second on the clock. So I think the I think the play for us here is just going to be kick the chip shot field goal. Get that field goal back that uh, they got. Kick is up. Kick is good. That's halftime in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. Reese two quarters down in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. A couple of teams looking to bring home some hardware for the trophy case. Each of these two offenses has looked like well-oiled machines. But it doesn't take a genius to figure out these two passing attacks have run circles around these defenses. Man or zone, nothing seems to be working. And I'm not sure that defensive coordinator is going to be able to figure things out here at halftime. Central Michigan kicking off to start the second half. Up by eight. As Rossi sends it deep, this will surely be a touchback. And the South Alabama Jags start at the 25-yard line. That one towards the sideline and a catch. First down of the... Oh, we were in recent this whole time. No wonder we kept getting the same play. At least it didn't take me a whole quarter to figure that out this time. First down from the 36-yard line. That one is thrown and caught once again. Chavis with a big hit but couldn't knock it away. Two passes, two completions. South Alabama already up to their own 48. Offensive line just doing work right now. Short dump off for a gain of five. Let's see if we can make Darqua a little uncomfortable. Bring Pryor up to the line of scrimmage a little bit. Second and five. Blitz coming and a Tochu with a tackle for a loss. It'll be third and seven. Remember on the punt, assuming we force a punt here, we've got a use of the safety over on the right. And he's going to run right into a sack. Blindside sack by Locke. Right as Darkwa turned around, and it's fourth and 15. So we'll use her Clark here. We can still rush on this. Just be careful not to run into the kicker. And this may be a mistake, and it is a massive mistake. That ball checked up at the one. It was skipping along nicely there, and then all of a sudden, not so much. Can Kyrie Strait get us a little bit of wiggle room? Yes, he can. Out past the five, rather to the five. Probably going to run three straight times, or at least until we get a first down. Here's straight again. Tried to find a hole. Found a little bit of one, and it's third down and two. So the fullback in Johnson. Don't usually call fullback dive on third and two, but here we go. Johnson. Close, but fourth and one. Oh, fuck. Let's punt. They're just going to give us a free first down anyway. Rossi. Oh, we missed him. Uh-oh. Well, that plan didn't work. So this is going to be good starting field position for South Alabama, but don't want to go for it on fourth down. Even fourth and one, I mean, from what, our own ten? Gonna watch out here for Coward. Beard getting free, but he finds an open man. Dark was pass complete inside the 20. 
Both quarterbacks right at 233 passing yards, but Sean Butts with the three touchdowns. From the 17 yard line, it's first and 10. And an RPO yet again. Somehow a gain on that play. I could not tell you how. Ooh. Tampa 2, we allowed 20 yards on average against. Oops. Oh, fuck. This is this is real bad. Look at what we got going on here. Finally get guys over there. I'm dropping Cleland back into coverage, and we got the pick. Alex Cleland with the interception, and that was all us. <laughs> Threw it right to us. We take those. Got to remember that Cleland is a linebacker. Central Michigan has it back. Let's see so not exactly too surprising to see him get that. So we pretty much get the ball back right where we left off. Is here's Kyrie straight to the 15. Antoine Butt has a man all over him over there on the left side. We'll see where the safety winds up. Antoine Butt, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, oh, that nearly found his man. Sean Butts was fading away from that ball, or fading away from that throw, and still nearly got it down there. Blitz coming straight for a loss of three. Back-to-back -back punts upcoming for CMU. Rossi sends it away. They ran into the punter for sure, but no call on that and cut down just shy of midfield. Well, fuck. Might drop Cleland back into coverage a little bit more. Quick ball. That one's picked off. Not me, but Pollard. Both quarterbacks now with three interceptions. Back-to-back -back passes by Darkwa have been picked off. And both interceptions to middle linebackers. First down touch pass for Callaway to the outside. Never really got much of a block, but still a decent gain of eight yards. This third quarter has just been absolutely... Awful football, but here's Kyrie straight. First down. The Chippewas get it past the sticks. And this is a guy that can find you the hidden yardage. That play, he just pushes the pile to get Could watch pass. Andrade, could watch Donahue, Callaway if we get enough time. We're going to go to Andrade. That's an underthrown ball yet again from Sean Butts. I don't know if it's the pressure or what. Hell, I'm just kind of amazed that Butts has played this deep into the game. And here's Kyrie straight. Couldn't get the blocks over there on the outside to really break that. Would have only had one man to miss. Straight going to break out wide here. First down from the 27. A wide, no, not a wide open man. Safety steps up. Fourth interception for Sean Butts. Welcome to the pick bowl. Pain. This third quarter has been some of the worst football ever. Well, the good news about this drive, Jesse, it can't go worse than last time through a pick on the first play. No, it certainly can't. Big hit, but a first down run. That was York on the run. Ten carries, 57 yards. Looking in, or looking with envy at the numbers Kyrie Straits put up in his final collegiate game. Over the middle. That could have been picked. Second down and ten. Couldn't make the connection last time. Let's see if they throw it again. Cleland, what a move. Alex Cleland, but the quarterback stepping up. Darquist slides down, and it's third and three. See if this blitz gets home. 
And scrambling throw on the run. It's intercepted by Ray Chavis. Three straight drives for South Alabama have ended in interceptions, and this was a throw on the run. Ill-advised. Now, we need to settle this fucker down. <laughs> Good Lord. Kyrie straight. Kyrie straight right up the middle. Gain of about 16. Empty backfield for Butts here on first and... 10 from the 29. There, oh, uh, mm, Callaway eventually got free. First and goal for, to the five yard line. That looked disastrous. Receiver ran into a defender, kind of got stuck on it, but did eventually get free. Over the middle on the slam. Antoine Butt couldn't hang on. How about a direct snap to Kyrie Strait? It worked earlier. Linebacker lurking right over Strait. Let's see. Strait looking for the end zone. Touchdown, CMU. First drive of this entire quarter to end with points for either team. Kyrie Strait for the touchdown. What a send off for the senior transfer. On to attempt the try. PAT up, PAT good. 31 16. 15 point lead now. Well, the best we've felt in this game. This will be a touchback, most likely, and it is. Here we go. Four straight drives have ended in interceptions. And that one nearly did as well. Chavis just a little bit too far back. Ray Chavis was looking for his third interception of the game. First down to the 41 for the Jags. And over the middle and caught. Gain of seven. I think that was Chavis on the hit yet again. After that last completion, it's second down. Second and three. We're going to occupy the guard here with Duke. Thrown out wide there and out of bounds. It'll be third and three. Three receivers out here on third down. One running back. That's Coward. Here we go, on the throw, intercepted by Otochu! Oh my goodness! This is kind of the South Alabama that we expected to see. It just took the entire first half. Still probably mispronouncing his name, but... Oh, well. Looks like Atochu. I have no idea. First down, CMU. Looking for Kyrie straight. Gain of six. First down. We'll get this to quarter number four. Open man on a short completion. That's Andrade. Manny Andrade yet again. Now, I haven't probably called a read option in-game. Well, I actually meant to keep that, but it's probably a good thing I didn't. Kyrie straight. First down to the 25. No need to risk anything here. We actually don't have to snap this ball, so we're not going to. We'll get this to the fourth quarter. CMU leading by 15, 31-16. CMU with the football to start quarter number four. Up by 15 points. Kyrie straight with a cut up and another nice run. As he's got to be nearing 200 yards rushing here in this game. He's sure to get it. 
as we try and run out the clock here late. Sean Butts rolling out. Going to dump that off. That's Callaway. It'll be first and goal Central Michigan from the six. Antoine Butts an option. Antoine Butts an option. Intercepted. <laughs> a little bit of tunnel vision on that. Corner was just a little bit too far behind Butt, which benefits him on a route like that. <clears throat> oh, boy. So South Alabama down 15 with the ball at their own 20. After throwing the pick on the last drive, need to take care of the ball this time, Jesse. We're gonna find out a lot about this. And a run. No gain. Nice tackle by Locke over there off the left edge. Spencer Locke's had a nice game. Plenty of guys on this defense have. Duke got free, and Duke with the sack. Fourth Central Michigan sack of the game. It'll be third down and 18. Really impressed by this pass rush. It's just guys winning their Isaiah Duke. And drop some guys back here. Cover four defense. Shouldn't. Shouldn't give up a first down here, but this is a deep one. And an up in the air. Oh my goodness. That could have been caught. Punting from their own end zone is South Alabama. Short punt. Return from the 48 and out of bounds at the 40. They'll give Donahue the 39. Central Michigan does not pay for yet another Sean Butts interception. We could see Paul Spitz at some point. Not the finale we were hoping for when it came to the career of Sean Butts. As here is Kyrie straight. He might have one man to beat. Not quite. Juke move gets straight down to the 16. I'm looking over there on this side. Sean Butts never really got a block, but a gain of seven on what I do believe is the first run of the day for Sean Butts. Second and three. Looking for Butt or Andrade. They ran into each other. Back in the end zone. Donahue got it for the touchdown. Toe drag right at the back of the end zone. And I'll tell you what, I think after that, I think we're going to put Paul Spitz in the game. 37-16 with just over 10 to play. Should be pretty comfortable with the way that our defense has been playing. Let's get a little taste of what we can expect, hopefully, the next two seasons here at CMU in Paul Spitz. He'll try to tack on one more. Kick is up, kick is good. No missed PATs today, and we haven't had to settle for any field goals. Four-play drive, just under two minutes off the clock. It's not impossible, but the South Alabama offense just hasn't gotten anything going all day. As this drive will start from the 20. Well, they finally had a drive not end in a... Interception last time out, and that almost ended right there. Pick bowl, as we've dubbed it. Duke got free. That's over the middle. Caught for a gain of six. At least Butts has rebounded a little bit with the touchdowns. He got four in this game. Pressure coming. Intercepted by Cantrell. Cantrell down at the 41. That ball's so underthrown. Easy to pick. And we're going to go into coaching and make that change. And we'll see what Paul Spitz has for us. 
Redshirt sophomore getting his first on-screen game action. Number 11, Paul Spitz, four-star quarterback. How many is that? I think that's his sixth pick. Straight. Nowhere really to go. Call play action and maybe try and use Spitz's speed here. He's got 90 speed. And hit hard. Incomplete, it's third and nine. We'll try a little bit of a more traditional passing play here on third down. Oh, awkward snap there. Tried to use the speed of Spitz, but read well by the defense. Fourth down and nine. Can we, can we see what a field goal from back here would do? Probably not going to try and kick it. I don't even know if we can make it, especially into the win. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Their quarterback can't stop throwing interceptions, so I figured why not. 38-16, eight and a half to play. Oh my goodness, that got caught through all that traffic. Whoa. Fifth or eighth catch, rather, for Scott Hendricks over 100 yards. Their quarterback might be over 300 yards passing now. Locke got picked off over on the side to the outside. Cantrell needs help to bring down the running back. That was Colt York. They've done plenty of work with both of their running backs, York and Coward. And now another run, and this one works pretty well as well. Gain of six. On the bright side, they're running the ball, taking a good chunk of time off the clock. Cleveland, plenty of speed, but uh, we just got absolutely carved up by South Alabama. Put this game a little bit closer, so... See what Paul Spitz can do with a little bit of added pressure now. Second touchdown of the game for Coward. This one receiving. And now they're going to go for it to cut it to a 14-point game. Hit as he throws, but that two-point conversion is good. It's a two-touchdown game, so a little bit of pressure now. And they close the deal with the seven-yarder for the score. No return coming. Holiday calls for the fair catch inside the tent. Central Michigan takes over, and we'll get another look at this offense. Hand off, Kyrie straight. They completely sold out for the run. Nice job there on defense. Read option with Paul Spitz might actually work. Oh, well, we handed it off to straight. I completely forget how read options work because I just never really call them that much. But first down there. Really should probably keep this ball on the ground, but we're going to give it a go anyway. Looking for Manny Andrade and overthrown, which is the complete opposite problem we had with Sean Butts the majority of the game. Straight. Looking for a block from the guard. Never really got one. Only a gain of four. Really probably should be in two clock here. This game has gotten a little bit more scary. Third down and six. I'm going to send Donahue. Oh, Spitz takes a sack out of nowhere. I thought that guy was covered up. And we're going to have to punt this ball away. Rossi sends it. Oh, they hit the punter, finally. First punt of the day that that's happened. Well, to them. So that'll be a first down for Central Michigan. 
The officials offer the deal and the coach accepts it. They will take the penalty. Well, so easy decision now. Run the ball with Kyrie straight. And that goes backwards. 30 carries on the game for Kyrie. Which is just absurd. Game does a pretty bad job of managing the load of these guys. That's Paul Spitz on the throw. Manny Andrade, full head of steam, down to the 21. Staying in bounds as well. Manny Andrade has been a big part of this offense here in this game. Here is straight, looking to the outside, tried to make a move, kind of did, but it's still a loss of three yards. Final play before the two-minute warning. Clear decision to run it with Kyrie, and straight makes it third much more manageable. Now, we don't need this first down necessarily. We're going to make this a three-score game again either way after this two-minute warning. But I feel like we throw the ball. I mean, worst-case scenario, it's an interception. But with two minutes to go, hopefully we'd still be okay. I want to see if Paul Spitz can do it under pressure here. Not the greatest throw, but it's a first down for Callaway and a timeout for South Alabama. Once again, not the greatest throw. Going to need Paul Spitz to get a great training boost in the offseason. Kyrie straight up the middle. Touchdown, Central Michigan. That is the nail in the coffin for the Myrtle Beach Bowl. Be Central Michigan's ninth win of the year. What a send-off for Kyrie Strait. And even with the interceptions, great send-off for Sean Butts and Antoine Butt as well. PAT is good. 45-24. So under two minutes to go. See if we can... Get another interception here from South Alabama. York with a full head of steam. Never really got around there. Broke out a one tackle. This is going to be down at the 11. Well, here we go. Oh, somehow didn't make the tackle there on that. I thought we'd time that dive pretty well. but First down as Darkwa is indeed... Over 300 yards passing, but you kind of figured that. Looking deep. Cleland got in there. He actually dumps it off short. Missing tackles left and right, quite literally. The clock running. South Alabama not using their timeouts right now. That's going to be a sack. Third down and eight, and I think that may have actually been one of our defensive tackles, and it was Trent Beard. Tried to user him all game, and yeah, we, we're losing the booty bros just because, I mean, they're, they're seniors. Cleland got free, big hit, and incomplete. Alex Cleland has had one hell of a game. Interception. Off the defensive line to go along with a couple of sacks, tackles for loss. Another big hit, and that's going to end it for South Alabama. One kneel down for Paul Spitz, who takes over. Actually, you know what? Let's do this right. We'll have Sean Butts take the knee. Mac Champion here in his final game, and he gets sent off with a bowl win. A kneel down for Central Michigan. 45-24 in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. And this one is just time as the offense takes a knee. Winning those individual six-second battles every play. Time after time after time after time. And that leads to a victory here. 
And I love when teams go out and play like it's sudden death. Like if they lose the game, their entire season is over. This game wasn't for the national championship. But wouldn't, you wouldn't know that watching this winning team, David. Tremendous effort and tremendous execution. Winners of the Myrtle Beach Bowl. It's always good to end your season with a win, but obviously when we were even just one of those losses there at the end of the season away from going to the MAC championship game, it's a really rough way to end the season. Should have been a lot better for us. Could have been Connor Stallion's second MAC title, at least an opportunity to get it. But I guess we uh, we take it. I mean, realistically, our our expectations for this season weren't that high to begin with. Uh, the team's just not there yet. Um, hopefully, here in these next couple years, when those four stars we got last year grow a little bit. So Spencer Locke actually gets MAC Defensive Player of the Week. And he had one of the more quiet games. I mean, Alex Cleland really, I thought, had the better game. Four tackles. I mean, he didn't get the pick, but, I mean, still had a great game. Most of the defensive line did. All right, well, after the bowl game, we get a commitment from tight end Tony Favre out of Florida. Hey, maybe he went to the game. We were playing. Wait, no, we weren't in Florida. We were in fucking <laughs> Myrtle Beach. What am I thinking? End of 2030, 2031 national champion is the Miami Hurricanes taking down Washington. That Heisman winner couldn't get in the end zone. 18-3 the final score. Another one of the three stars is on board. Three-star tight end, Brian Willie. Oh, and another one, three-star right guard, Niles Vick. Players leaving could be a little bit scary, and it's actually... Ooh, it, it, it's not... But, um, it's it's a little scary. Britton Wiley was a four-star running back we recruited heading into his junior season. Now, the good news is that we have a medium chance to persuade him. We have eight persuasions. We don't need him, so the obvious choice to try and persuade to keep him does not work. Ooh, that's a little bit of a stinger because I don't know how good we are at the running back position after him. He was going to be the one to take over for Kyrie Strait. So let's head into the transfer portal, see who we have available to us. Are there any recommended four stars? Um, actually, there is. Max Keenan, we're third on his board. That makes all the sense in the world. Any others? Not in recommended. But what about four stars elsewhere? <clears throat> that might just be it. I feel like everybody's recommended when it comes to the transfer portal, and they are. So we'll get hopefully one... Even though we don't necessarily need him. Transfer is a junior. Hmm. Well, we could get him for a year. Hopefully bolster the defense. Three stars, though. I mean, we're losing Antoine Butt this year. Ooh, a freshman transfer. That's interesting. Committed to Oklahoma as well. He might be pretty good. A left tackle here. We do have a three-star running back in Ty Hoffman. No idea if he's worth a shit or not. But I feel like we got to do something right now. Ralph Hill. <clears throat> and then right guard Mike Self. That's going to be all for the transfer portal. And then let's fill the board up with uh, three-star prospects. Or maybe even one straight four-star, even though I don't think there are any. So we definitely don't need any one or two stars at this point in the dynasty. We do have another running back here. Oh, wait, that's another transfer. What? <clears throat> Why are there transfers in here? Let's sort by three-star prospects and sort by what stage they're in. A lot of fullbacks. Got a wide receiver. Juco sophomore, though. Kyle Lewis. Worth a shot. Not a, not listed as a need, but I feel like it is. Halfback Nick Alonzo. There are, there are running backs on this team, so I'm not super worried about that. And everyone else is already committed, so... I guess we're just going to try and fill this up with whoever's here. Let's head back into Recommended. We'll add Bakari Awuzie. 
A one-star punter. That's not actually a need at all. Should be in pretty good shape on the other punter. Wait, what was a woozy, actually? Come to think of it. But see, I actually don't think we're going to do that. Let's sort here and get the guys that we actually might possibly need at uh, the three-star level. 32 targets. If we have to settle for that, we do. But we actually don't also add a defensive tackle even though they're transfers I didn't see these guys the first time so I know this is very low percentage got a quarterback got a wide receiver I'll add the receiver Johnson at right guard these are all three stars good Dubose at right tackle a transfer in Miles Iwoma Troy McGee at corner, even though that's going to be a bunch of corners. I'd actually rather add another safety. The third at his position? What? Third best safety is a three-star. Interesting. 34, and then... Just because this name is only a little funny. Junior transfer John Officer. Certainly not going to be a, uh, as good of a recruiting class as it was a year ago. We already kind of know that. Um... We haven't gotten as many four stars as we did um, in 2029, but maybe just a weak class. You never know, I suppose. So scholarships offered to everybody. Now let's work on getting some guys to CMU. Going to be a little bit conservative on the kicker and the punter. Go with this and see what happens. Duhan, the right guard, probably going to be able to spend 25 this week and then maybe get a commit from him. That would be great. Hip and hammer might be the same sort of deal. We're going to have to do a lot on three-star defensive tackle Jeremiah Amerson. But hopefully, I mean, I don't think he's going to last more than just this one week anyway. So, be able to get those hours back, spread them out elsewhere. Max Keenan, we need to do everything we possibly can to get the four-star transfer here. Just to get a playmaker, hopefully, on this team. Going to need some commitments this week, I think. Otherwise, we might wind up with a recruiting class of 20 or less. We're not going to be able to get everybody. I'm going to hit one of these corners and then go elsewhere. Uh, 15 hours, I guess, on Radigan. Got a good bunch of these guys. Think we're only not going to get action in on six. 110 hours freed up. Somebody locked us out. It was Dubose down here on the bottom. So we'll be able to do something on most of these guys that are remaining, but... How are we doing on Keenan? Leading. Good. Well, we're spending the maximum amount of hours that we can anyway. Pretty much all we have to do is just sit and wait. Amerson, it's not looking likely, but maybe another week um, we can pass him. Or pass Virginia Tech when it comes to him. Early lead on pace. We're down on Foster. Not looking good on Kyle Lewis at all. He's got action from Michigan. Back off to 25. Go 50, 10, 5. And then head down to some of the guys. Not those corners. I think we did well enough at corner. Get 25 in on a couple more. Defensive tackle, probably still a big need. And then uh, John Officer as well. Well, we don't have enough for that. So I guess we're going to do 15 and spend five on Kerry Johnson. Three-star right guard Ruben Duhan hopefully isn't the only commitment that we get this week. He is not. Three-star center Devin Hippenhammer. 
So Amerson to Virginia Tech. That didn't work out all that well. Max Keenan to Michigan State, and he didn't even have that visit with them yet. So that blows. Self goes somewhere else. Bigsby to Michigan State. Garrett to Illinois. Locked out on Johnson, didn't make the top eight. And Awuma, the defensive tackle, to Illinois. So now the class down to 27 targets. Let's see if we can add any more. <clears throat> so 305 hours. Where are we at here on Mercer? Not looking all that good. 50 hours there. Let's head to the top of the list, actually. Slight lead on the kicker over Northwestern. That isn't good. What about the punter in Harding? North Texas has jumped us. So we're also going to have to back that off and head in and spend the maximum amount of hours we can on a kicker and a punter. We lead on pace. We're pretty comfortable there. We're behind on Ty Foster. So we'll rework this just a little bit. Up our action here to 60 hours. Quan Keener behind. Same deal. Spread these hours out on the players that need it. Hoffman, a lead and a very slight lead, but over UConn. We'll just send the house on him instead. That should give us an edge. Ralph Hill. Just 50. Kyle Lewis, we lead for the moment. Corey Dubois is probably not going to happen. Could get something going on these corners, but what's the competition? Florida State on both of them. Leading on Krasir. We'll add another 10 there. Dwayne Rahman. We'll add 15. Rich Bloom, we have a lead. Radigan, not looking good. At 25. Mercer, we should be... I mean, we're, we're in there. Somewhat, some way. <clears throat> I mean, as much as we would like to have John Officer, is he really that essential? No. We're not in the top eight of any of these guys and running out of time. So we'll offer a scholarship and I guess just add 10 points to Nick Alonzo and hope that works. Final week of recruiting here. And I don't know if we're going to get that punter, so we're going to have to probably go in-house when it comes to punting. We're looking pretty good on the kicker. I don't know what a, a week six visit is. But there's only four weeks of this recruiting cycle here. Leading on pace. Leading on Foster. Behind on Keener. But we made some good progress. Behind just slightly on Hoffman. Leading on Hill. And I mean, we have so few hours here. Dubois, Sherry, Durbin. But those two corners that we got locked out on, we never did any work on. A little slight bit of work on Rich Bloom. Officer goes to Kentucky. Class is down to 26 targets. Let's just offer scholarships to these guys. Uh, this probably isn't going to work all that uh, out all that well. We're really staring at a class of under 20 players in the face right now. It is National Signing Day. Three-star corner, Ty Foster. Three-star outside linebacker, Ralph Hill. Three-star outside linebacker, David Crozier. And that is... Oh, my God! Training, this is going to be huge because Paul Spitz heading into his redshirt junior season. 84 overall. His speed is up to 94. Throw power, 91. Accuracy is not terrible. The short accuracy is certainly playable. Sean Bouchard up to an 82 in his junior year. Fullbacks, they're fullbacks. Receivers, kind of the same as they've always been. Sophomore Manny Andrade at an 80. Offensive line. Anthony Silvestro. After, dude, after the position changes, he has gained 15 overall. 
because he's back where I wanted him in the first place. I moved him to guard. He was a center. And yet, for whatever reason, a glitch in the game put him down at 63 overall. Offensive line actually doesn't look that bad. It could look better, but it doesn't look that bad. Senior Trent Beard at an 87. Defensive uh, defensive tackle's pretty bad. Atochu, I don't think he was the starter before, but he's going to be now. Three middle linebackers here. Goodwell in 83. Spencer Locke in 81 with Cam Cam York. Corbin York. Cam York is Cam York plays hockey, doesn't he? I don't know. Cornerbacks. We're actually looking really good. Look at Chavis. Look at Hoosman. I would not actually be all that surprised if Bobby Hoosman tried to leave after this season. Safety Fernando Santiago at an 83. Corbin Gunter right behind him. Probably should have moved Gunter, honestly, to uh, to strong safety. That would have been more beneficial. Nathan Wilbur up to an 81 overall. 79 kick power, but 89 accuracy. And then our new punter, former kicker Devin Robbins. 91 kick power, his accuracy goes up by three. And let's see if we can even mess with custom schedules this year. Now, the good news is that I only see that we have four non-conference games. Which is what we should have had in the first place. So, we should be able to edit this schedule. Get the home and home with Boise. We'll bring them to Kelly Short Stadium this time. Won't play Penn State back-to-back -back years. Even though we beat them a year ago. If we go to Happy Valley, that certainly, certainly doesn't go our way. Georgia Tech, ACC team. We should be better than them anyway, so we'll just go there. FCS East, I don't want to schedule FCS schools at all. Is there... I mean, there's a beatable top 25 team here in Cal. Is there a number 26 this time around? There is. I don't know why that happens. There's a 26th ranked Stanford. Number 15th ranked UConn. What? Why are they ranked 15th? That's bizarre. Bring them, bring them here. Actually, what we should do is play UConn here. So let's quickly swap out of that. Just put the pandas in there for the moment. And get a top 25 win, hopefully, in week one. Assuming they're available this week. They are. I, why are they ranked? That just seems so bizarre. And now is Boise available this week? They are. So home game, home game. Go to Georgia Tech. Mississippi State's also ranked, but kind of bad. Home field advantage there in Starkville is going to be a little bit scary. But if we can win this game, win the other two, be 3-0 and headed into this game with Mississippi State and then win it, win all of our non-conference games things could go very well for us especially with the team that it looks like we have this year